Uh, Mark, in terms of like, and we talked as well about body cams um, and I know there's deep frustration at the delay of those being rolled out um, to officers who say it's actually really frustrating that when we see evidence, when we see video footage, it's not coming from them. It's coming from somebody uploading it from across the road. Exactly. And you can see people uploading those. I know you um, redacted the, the, what was on the caption, but it was like Gardy getting broke up, you know, laughy face emojis. You know, these people are laughing at this, thinking this is funny. It was the same with the, the Garda cars that are rammed. You know, people are laughing at this, thinking this is great fun. So there's a contempt there for the Gardaí. And, you know, I know speaking to a lot of Gardaí, they say it's a bit of a revolving door. When they prosecute someone, they're back out, you know, within 24 hours, 48 hours, you know, maybe they'll get a suspended sentence. So there's a big frustration there. Yes, there are th quick things that could be done or things that could be done faster, like the body cams, which are, you know, every Bobby in the UK has had them for 10 years now. We're not going to get them until 2024. You know, something that could be used as evidence to help convict people. You know, they'll be shown to a court, get these people off the street when they do stuff like this. And, you know, Gardy would feel frustration when they're moving to bring in drug testing for us and make us pee in a jar. They won't get us a body cam where we can get evidence yeah, against these people. Uh, James, I need to take that up with you. What, what, what's the story with the delay on that? 2024, they're now saying that body cams will be rolled out to members of the force. Why is it taking so long when we can see, when we're talking about a rise in attacks on Gardy, we had 144 attacks on Gardy, say, in 2012. And we had 241 attacks on Gardaí last year. So that shows the increase we've seen over the past decade. And yet, basic measures like body cams that could help uh, members of the force feel safer as they carry out their work are being stalled. Yes, well, look, absolutely, Garda Sheikh Khan need these body cams. It's something that's accepted by the government. So, why 2024? So, we need legislation to underpin the use of those body cams and, and how the data will be retained and will be used. That the legislation is now going to work its way through the House. The Garda Commissioner is going to pilot then the use of the body cams early, I think, next year, and then it will be fully rolled out then as an operation. Like, does matter. it need to be piloted? That's the sort of urgency I think that we're hearing from Garda unions going, you know, our members just, Garda need these body cams. They need, it's not the, it's not the be-all and end-all, but it certainly is a start and it would help them feel more secure in the job in the absence of other resources. Well, the operational rollout of body cams is a matter for the Garda Commissioner and he does of, of the view that he does need to pilot them first to see how they do work, how you use them and use them safely. Because obviously you don't want a situation where you roll out body cams and then they're being challenged in the courts. We have to ensure that what they're used for is going to be effective to put these criminals off the street. Uh, will it put criminals off the street? I mean, what's your take on it, Hazel? Um, you know, when you, when you see people who would have, it, it would appear to have a sense of immunity mm -hmm. um, from, from law, will things like body cams make a difference to Garthi? Um, I think, as you said, there, there'd have to be a dialogue and around like what footage would be used, how it would be available to the public as well on a, you know, a, a piece that we could all be kind of relating to the use of the, yeah, the body Yeah, so cams. that there would be accountability across the board. Yeah, and I think there is a point as well that we need to have a piece of discretion around mandatory sentencing because we would look at research and they would say that removing the power from the judiciary and putting it into legislation hasn't worked in other countries as well. So I don't think people are going to stop putting these heightened attacks to reflect and say that this is going to be an automatic sentence and I just don't think it's going to have the effect that we're looking for. But, to, but if there's that sense, as Mark was talking about, about this revolving door that people literally go into court and come out, they are bailed and then they get a suspended sentence, mm -hmm. there's a sense that, that there's no consequences for their actions. Yeah, and I think this is when you look at it as an aspect of dealing with it after something has happened, which is why I think it's important to be empowering communities to be dealing with things like the way that they would now. We were very integrated into our community. I'm from Cherry Orchard again, I've said that before, and I think it's important though that we are seeing people within our community able to stand up and say we will support you to address this. The mm. only way that I've ever seen anything being changed in the areas is being empowering communities through neighbourhood watch. We don't have to go down the road that they went down again, but it was an aspect to say, look, empowering them, supporting them is, is the only way I feel we'll see any change. Or we'll be back here again talking about something possibly worse.